Hey guys, welcome to another video. We are in our craft fair series and this is video number two. And for today's idea, I have an envelope flip book. So I've got my four envelopes here, envelope, envelope. I'll probably say it all sorts of different ways during this video. And I am gonna put these together. But I am gonna tell you that I am winging it. Like, I've, I've never made an envelope flip book, and so um, I'm not really sure how to put these together, but what I'm gonna do for you is I'm going to link one of my favorite crafters here on YouTube. Um, she goes by the name Lyric Lover, and um, she has um, a little side crafting business called Trapeze Crafts. And she's amazing. She's an amazing paper crafter. Her whole family is amazing. See, I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. <laughs> so like you can watch me mess with this envelope stuff, but just know that if you want to put an envelope book together, go over to Lyric Lover. So I'm going to include her link in my description box and um, go click on her. She'll explain it perfectly. Um, for you and you can use any size envelope you do not have to use white you can use any color um but yeah and you can use as many envelopes as you want to make the book thicker or um, thinner i'm using aileen's tacky glue because that's what's available at our local dollar tree and um i like using dollar tree products because quite frankly if you're running up to michael's every time you need craft supplies that can get a bit pricey so if you can um, get to your Dollar Tree and kind of um, work with what they have like I use their tape runners I use their Aileen's tacky glue I use their Mod Podge I use their double-sided tape uh, what else do I use from there I use all their like stickers and beads and all that from Dollar Tree so anyway, I'll just put this in fast forward and head over to Lyric Lover um, in the description box below if you want an intense explanation on how to put this together because I just, I don't know how to explain it. But I do know how to show you how to decorate it and I think it turned out super cute. So keep watching. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoor, forever free. Okay, so now that the base of this envelope flip book is put together, now comes the fun part, which is the decorating. So I've got all of these six by six paper pads and the two jot ones, of course, are from, of course, are from the Dollar Tree. And the other ones are just ones that I've gotten either on clearance at craft stores or I've picked up at Tuesday mornings. Tuesday mornings is another go-to for me as far as craft supplies. They sell these six by six sometimes for as low as a dollar ninety nine you can get these six by six paper pads and they're super cute so that's what i'm going to be using for this project right now all i'm doing is just measuring my envelope because you want to measure and see um, what size mat you're going to need um, for these pages. Now every envelope is going to be different. So I just showed you my measurement, which was, I believe it was four by five and a quarter. And, um, I counted how many mats I needed to cut out. So now I'm just going to go through, this is called the bow bunny collection. It is so sweet. It's got like 
the most adorable colors and um, images so sweet and I picked out six or I'm sorry eight pages because that's how many I needed to cover each page and I'm just gonna rip them out and then cut them down to size like I said you measure your envelopes because every envelope is gonna be different what I like to do is make sure that there's about a quarter inch around um, the envelope so I cut it I'll measure the envelope and then I'll cut in a quarter inch on each side Sometimes I need to go and take a step back to see the truth. Also, at this point, you want to make sure that your paper is oriented right. Um, so if you have a pattern that needs to be up and down, you need to make sure that that's how you're cutting it. So if your measurement for your um, envelope is four, horizontally, then you need to make sure that that's how your pattern is running. So just make sure you don't have anything running sideways or anything like that. Forever free You and me Meant to be In the great outdoors And now I'm going through and picking out which paper I want on each page. This is my front. I definitely wanted this little, um, it's like candies um, in the apothecary jars. And I just want to make sure that all of my papers match each other but are not like clashing when they're next to each other on these pages. So that's why I went through and chose which paper I wanted on which page before I started gluing them down because I just want to make sure everything matches up properly. And for this, I'm going to use my Dollar Tree tape runner and a little bit of Aileen's Tacky Glue if I feel like it needs it in the middle there. And a little trick for this Aileen's Tacky Glue is I just take an extra piece of cardstock um, and just kind of um, wipe it like that so you're not getting any bubbles. It prevents bubbles because it makes a nice thin layer of the Tacky Glue and that way you don't get you know the thick bubbling so now what I'm gonna do is make sure that these envelopes can actually still open because I want to use these envelopes as little tuck spots so I'm making sure that I remember don't glue down this part right here because I want to be able to slide stuff into um, the envelope as a little tuck spot now you will see after I get done with this um, that I did go back and make the tuck spot a little bit easier accessible. Um, you'll see when we get to that part, I'll explain it to you. But again, I'm just making sure that I don't glue it shut because I want to be able to put stuff in the envelope as a little goodie and surprise area. See that? And now this one is just a full matted page, so I'm gluing all the sides. And I'm just going to put this down. And I'm going to use the same trick with the tacky glue. Just lay it on there and then swipe it with an old piece of cardstock. Again, making sure I mark off this one edge because I want to remind myself not to put tape or glue there because I don't want it glued down. And you can choose how many of your pages you want to have tuck spots in and how many you just want matted pages. I didn't do it for all the pages, as you can see. Um, I just did it for a couple because I like to have little tuck spots so people, um, if they receive the book, can put stickers or extra um, scrapbook paper or handmade embellishments, whatever you want to hide in there, whatever kind of goodies you want to hide in there for them.
decided just to take a scrap of paper here and just um, make a little pocket on one of these pages that doesn't have a pocket just as an extra little tuck spot so I can make sure that I, like I said, include plenty of goodies in this envelope book. I keep a basket of um, just stuff to give away uh, behind me on my desk here. So I've got um, stickers from books that I um, want to be able to share with my friends. I've got handmade embellishments. I've got tags that I've made. So I just dig in that basket every time I need to fill like an um, loaded envelope or happy mail, things like that. Yeah, I'm not super happy with that being um, so deep there. So I'm going to go in and cut it down the center and just peel it back and make it look decorative. So when you originally put the book together, if you don't want it to go all the way up like this, make sure you prepare for that. I just didn't prepare properly for that. Make sure you cut that um, piece of decorative paper a little bit um, shorter on the side if you don't want to have to peel it back like this. Yeah, I didn't think about that ahead of time. So you know what, though? That's what I really love about crafting is that um, sometimes Hannah will come to me and she'll be like, oh my gosh, mom, I messed up. And she'll get discouraged because she's, you know, 20 minutes into a project and she messed up. But the thing with paper crafting is that usually you can fix it. Usually you can just get creative. That's where the creative process is, is you get creative and you just fix your mistake. Again, you can learn from my mistake here. See, I had to cut out an area because the paper is just way too long and I didn't like how deep the um, tuck spot was. So like I said, when you're putting the book together, go ahead and pre-plan for this because it's harder to have to fix it <laughs> than it is just to do it right in the beginning.
and washi tape is my favorite way to fix mistakes when it comes to paper crafting. So I cut it just a bit too short and um, you could see the envelope underneath it. So I just laid a strip of washi tape on top and boom, all of a sudden you can't see that. <laughs> You can see the top of my shirt up near my neck looks deformed. It's not. It has my phone in it because I'm talking to Gabrielle. So I'm multitasking. I have it flipped upside down so she's on speaker so I can hear her and talk to her hands free. How creative am I? I know. I'm a weirdo. So I'm just going to set the rest of this to music. Um, this part of the crafting process is just being creative. I'm going through my packages of ephemera that I have laying down. I'm going through some of my scrapbook pages that I've fussy cut pieces of flowers or birds or butterflies. I'm going through all my stickers. I'm going through my washi tape. This is the time that you can really use up a lot of your scraps and a lot of the, um, the little things that you put aside for an important project. Well, here's the important project and go through all your scraps, um, make something that is beautiful and that you would enjoy giving to somebody. Although this is a craft fair series, um, this is also something that you can make for a pen pal, for a friend, something like that. But I did make it intentionally for you know a craft fair. So I'm just gonna set this to music. I think the only other thing that I did was add an extra tuck spot. On the last page, you'll see that I just cut the slightest bit off the edge of the envelope to open it up. And when we get to that, I'll show you. But for right now, I'm gonna set it to music and stop chatting.
here is where I cut off just the slightest sliver of envelope just to reveal the inside of the envelope so I could use it as another tuck spot.
right, this is it. This is how it turned out. I'm gonna flip through this book for you. I love it. I think it is super cute. I think it's super full of um, all sorts of goodies. So you've got um, this tuck spot here that I've put um, some stickers in, some planner stickers, some homemade embellishments, and those just tuck nicely in there. These are some handmade embellishments that I've just made while trying to use up scraps. And then I've got a cute little Project Life card here for somebody to um, either journal on the back of, maybe put a picture on the back of, things like that. This is just a matted page. Spring showers bring May flowers, super cute. Another tuck spot here with all sorts of goodies in it. I see a tag, some craft paper, and some more stickers. Okay guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this um, video. This is number two of my week-long craft fair series. For this project, I would probably charge three or four dollars for each of these envelope flip books. That's just because, again, you need to get paid for your time and your creativity if you are um, an artist that makes handmade goods. So I'm going to finish it off with a ribbon closure and call it done. I hope that you guys, again, enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos in this series. And I will see you back tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.